um, even there are people coming in. Um, welcome. Welcome to DrupalCon Austin. Welcome to the first session. Great that you made it all here and you find your way into multilingual. So the first session is about Drupal 8 multilingual and um, or Drupal 8 core is more multilingual than Drupal 7 with all of Contrib. So who of you has built a Drupal 7 multilingual site? Okay, Drupal 6. Okay, Drupal 5. Ooh. <laughs> um, who never built any multilingual? Okay, you will be excited. The other people have an old time and it was hard in the back days. Now it's pretty much easier. Whoever tried out Drupal 8 multilingual? Good, okay. So, who am I, what I'm doing here? So, I'm Michael or schnitzel on v.org and when I'm not um, sitting upside down on our couch in the office to think about stuff or flying drones at Kino Group videos, um, yeah, I'm working at Amazing Labs. We are a company in Zurich and I'm part of the Drupal 8 multilingual team. Um, so that's a small, neat, great team um, of people that are really interested in multilingual and get um, Drupal 8 multilingual as much as possible. One of them is Tobias and he recently tweeted that, so with content and config translation in core D8, core is more translatable than D7 with all of Contrib. We already heard that, so the people are really um, happy that we finally have that in. Maybe some plugs here, so the presentation is actually not done by me, it's done by Gabor. He is the initiative lead, he planned to be here, but he couldn't be here, so um, I told him, hey, I take over the talk and bring all the multilingual love to Austin. So. To talk about multilingual, um, Gabor has actually, he's from, um, from, where is he from, Romania? No, Hungary, Hungary thank you, yes. Um, and he has a bit of special name. And um, it's like with the multilingual thing. So um, whenever we like from the Europe, we have a lot of languages, like Switzerland has four official languages, but we actually build sites in five. Um, so it's a lot of issues um, around that and so. And one of the interesting things that happens to him all the time is that his name got get mixed up. So the, the double cross is not a double cross, it's actually an A with an M percent on top, but a lot of, a lot of um, custom fonts can't handle that and it's the same with other languages. Like German has, um, has umlauts, um, a lot of issues. So he has a really big repertoire of issues where his name is written wrong and that's one of the things that we really said, okay, let's not only like, or let's make Drupal 8 really multilingual aware, but don't just stop in like other um, languages like English. We go far, we want to support everything, and Gobber can finally be happy that his name is spelled wrong every time on batches or wherever. So let's talk about Drupal 8. Um, as you might know, Drupal 8 has a lot of different initiatives. Um, there is the services, there is configuration management, there is mobile, there is views, um, there are a lot of different things. And we in the multilingual team, we have a pretty special standing because usually the other initiatives, they come up with something and they say like, hey, we got that really great configuration management stuff, let's build that in. And then they start to talk to the multilingual team and the multilingual team comes in and says like, I'm really sorry that that doesn't, it's not translatable or we need that additionally. So we're usually like in contact with all of them. So we are a bit dis disruptive inside of Drupal 8 of the development, but that's really good because together with these people, we figured out ways how to unify things, how to tr make everything translatable out of one point. So we'll see that. But when we talk about we, and as I said before, the D8MI team is small, it's actually not. Um, so we are a lot of people that helped working on Drupal 8 multilingual. That's only the people that ever wrote a comment, a post, or something else on Drupal 8 multilingual issues. And that's really great. If somebody is here, thank you very much. And I know some people are here which helped on that. Um, it's a really long time. We're working on that since a long time, but now we're finally getting to the end and we're super happy about that. So in total, more than 1,000 people have now contributed so far. So um, if you just were at the keynote, that's like a third of that what we saw there was all people that like helped 
working that. So it's a huge group of people, a lot of people that put effort of their free time, sometimes of their working time, into that to do that. And of course, it's humans. So we, we're not like sitting at home and do um, our own stuff. We do that sometimes, yes. We are geeks as well, but we are also having fun. So we meet occasionally in different um, times, and you see in the middle that's Gabor. Uh, we have Kathy, and we have Dust Peter um, working together, discussing things. We have Plutch, that's actually shortly before he got in the entity translation patch, which was one of the biggest ones. So a lot of thinking there. We are at Sprints. We have fun, we talk about stuff, we not only code together, we go out in the evening, um, we have fun, we drink, we, have, um, we eat. So if you want to join, join us. Um, at the end, I will tell you how you can actually get involved. So in total, these more than 1,000 people have managed to handle more than 1,000 issues inside of Drupal 8, and that's also a lot. There's a lot of things to fix. There's a lot of things to refactor again. So all these people together put a lot of effort into um, Drupal 8 to make it what it is right now. So let's go back a bit. Drupal 7 multilingual. Whenever you want to make a site, the first thing you have, you have Drupal core. And then you go to the module list, and there is a module called locale, and you load that, and it basically allows you to have multiple languages, and you have, a, you have a languages UI. That's it. That's all that Locale does. So you stand there and say, okay, now I need more. So first thing that you want to have is maybe there is uh, contributed translations. So there's a module called L10N up, which allows you to automatically download contributed translations. So there's a website called localized.drupal.org where people put their efforts in in translating Drupal and also country modules. Like the most um, common modules are fully translated in other languages. So whatever you need, if you download views and you have L10N up installed, it automatically downloads the translation and you have it in German and you have it in French and you have it in a lot of different other languages. So your UI is now translated, but now the editors start to um, enter content and so you need content translation. The problem is it only, makes, it only works for nodes. So the only thing that you can actually translate is a node, and it makes copies of that node, and we will see later that that's actually sometimes a really bad idea. Um, but whenever you want to translate something else, let's imagine you want to translate a taxonomy term, or a menu link, or whatever that other is on your site, or you have a block, um, you run into issues. So for that, we need another module, and it's actually a whole suite of modules. It's the uh, IATN, and it has additional modules. So you have menu translation, you have taxonomy translation, you have field label translation, you have views, um, and then you have web form localization. So it's a lot of additional modules you need to find, you need to download, that sometimes need to be in the right versions, that they work with each other and not. And then you continue working on it, and then maybe you send out a mail, and you realize, wait, that's not translatable. So you go and search, and you realize, oh, there is a variable. There is a variable API, so I can do that too. And it uses a total different UI. And yeah, so you're happy, and then your customer comes and says, I would like to have a shop. And you say, well, that's fine. I do content translation with that. And then you realize that actually you have 10 times a blue T-shirt. And like if you use a commerce with stock information, because and content translation clones your notes, so it also clones the products, suddenly your stock is not correct, and you have to synchronize that. And it's a lot of hassle around there. So people came up with another module, which is called Entity Translation, which allows you to translate notes on a field base rather than actually copying notes. So you look at that, and it looks like six modules, but it's in total like 27 modules. You need currently 27 modules if you have a really big Drupal site with shops, with um, domain access and all these things, you need 27 modules to actually handle localization properly. It's really cool because you have a fully translatable website, but it's a lot of pain. So we said, that's really cool, let's strip it down to four modules. There are four modules in Drupal 8 core now which are shipped, which handle all that we saw before in 27 modules, it's all in four. So what are these? First, it's the language module. It's the base for everything that you need. It basically explains Drupal what a language is and how a language works. 
it's not multilingual itself. It just adds some language stuff to it. It doesn't allow you to translate stuff yet. Then we have the interface. So that's everything that you see that is shipped by other modules, like um, the submit button or something. And in there, we automatically added the update feature. Um, and we also added a lot of um, in, uh, usability improvements. There's accessibility improvements. So we not only took the modules from Contrib, put them in core, we refactored them, we thought about them, we rebuilt them, we wrote tests and all these things. Then we have a content translation. And that's the, it's on a field level. So it's the old Drupal 7 entity translation is now in core and called content translation. Um, it has a better user interface. It's easier. It's REST API-able and all these things. And then we have the config translation. So config, the new kit in the blog in Drupal 8, where everything that you configure, like a view, like a vocabulary, an email, is now config. And we support config translation. So it's a common system that allows you to translate any config you could imagine that you have on your site. Um, and it's also integrated into the other systems. So let's speak about the single um, systems. First, language. And the cooler thing in total, Drupal has the installer, the first thing that it asks you is, um, which language would you like? So if you select another language, it will automatically download the translation while, in, while the installation, you can install in another language, whatever it is, um, and so you have the best experience to, trend, to start right from the beginning with the right um, translation. So everything is there. Um, it all works. And when, when, if you can read it, you can install it away. So you even see here it's, uh, it's right to left, so that's also supported from the beginning. It downloads all the modules. Um, it also downloads automatic translations for them if there are on localized Drupal.org. Um, and you have your site right away. And the really coolest thing, English is not even there at the end. Um, whenever you build a site and you don't need English, but there is still an English, or you maybe want to change something, it's not there anymore. The language you select in the beginning is the language your Drupal is in. So to actually do that, we need language assignments. And in Drupal 7, we have language assignments for these. So we have nodes, we have aliases, and we have users. Now in core, we actually go further. So we have, um, we have language assignments to terms, um, whatever is translatable there. We have language assignments to views. So you can create different views for different languages. Like if you want to have your front page being different, um, for different languages because you have a lot of content in English, but you don't have so much content in French, that's all possible. We have site informations, um, like your, um, your site name or your slogan. Sometimes that's not always exposed, because we found out that in usability uh, studies that it's sometimes really hard, so we try to also make it easier there. Um, but there is way more. So basically everything that you have now in Drupal core has a language assignment, and you can define that's only for German, that's only for French, that's for both, or whatever. So that's really cool. We also have a really flexible language setup. So you can now, actually, I need to see it. Yeah. So we have a new UI that allows you to set up the languages. So whenever you used to be in Drupal 7, you had to go to each single field and specify if it's translatable or not. We unified all of that, and there is one single form that allows you to set which entity is translatable, which field, even with subfields. So if you have images, you can translate the title and the alt text, but not the picture itself or the field itself. You can do everything via one UI, and it's all in there, and it's way easier to do it, to make changes, and not like clicking around and figuring out where you do all these things. The next thing, we have language visibility. So um, blocks, per default, can uh, be shown and hidden based on language, um, which was also only possible via country modules before. Then views are already set up that they, um, that they only show their correct language or the current node in their correct languages. And um, another really cool thing is, as you heard, views is in core. 
So everything that is a list um, is now a view, and the view is translatable. So that's one of the points that um, where we said, look, views, if you make your whole view system multilingual um, possible, automatically every backend is multilingual aware. So that's like these things that we went in with other um, um, core initiatives and worked with them together to fix these things. Another point, point that we used to have is language selection. So it worked pretty well, but sometimes you had some issues with like, okay, which browser language should it load? So we also unified that UI. So you can now define each language code that is for German. Because there is not only German, there is Swiss German, there is French, uh, there is Austrian German, there is worldwide German, there are a lot of different ones. And you can define now all of them by the UI, and it's much easier. Things that you used to have write custom code before is now all in there um, and works. So you can define them which language code assigns to which language. Good. Next thing, coming back to the beginning, name transliteration. So what's transliteration? That sometimes people enter the things in their languages, which obviously is the case. Um, but Drupal needs um, machine-readable code sometimes, like for exports and things. So it needs to be um, in, um, in a default character. So um, what it allows you is um, whenever you type in another uh, uh, a string in another language, it automatically translates that to something machine readable. Um, that also used to be a, a contrib module, and now it's in there. So whenever, whatever you type in, you don't get a crazy error saying that's not possible for machine readable. People just type in whatever they used to, and it automatically changes to what Drupal can actually understand in there. Good. One really cool thing and especially when you don't need English, English can be deleted and it can also be deleted afterwards. That's really cool because especially when you have a non-English website, you still have that English and sometimes English pops up somewhere. So finally, English can be deleted and you can add it again. It's no fixed boundaries to need have, uh, to, to have English all the time. Okay, so that's everything that is done via the, um, sorry. Here. So everything that is done by the locale, so you can delete English, you have a flexible selection, you have block visibilities, you have views um, support, we have a config, we have wider assignments to almost everything inside of Drupal core with, translation, with languages, and we are the first step in the installer to whatever, do, um, whatever language you would like to have to install. Next point, the next pillar, interface translation. Already mentioned, we automatically translate um, or automatically download translations um, of modules when they are localized to Bottle.org. Also, whenever do, you do your own translations, there's a centralized file. So if you change something and you need to ship that to a uh, live site to, um, to deploy that, it's all in one file now. We have um, customized tracking. Um, so whenever you overwrite a uh, shipped translation or a downloaded translation, Drupal realizes that you changed that and the next time you update, it's not deleted or changed. Drupal knows it's, um, it's as custom translation treated and um, won't override them. Um, then also we, um, we had a lot of issues with like shared hosting that like the download of, of, of files took really long. So we put that everything in batches. So whenever like you're on a, on a shared hoster that you can't run stuff longer than 30 seconds, that's all handled by, by the batch system and um, will allow you to download translations. Also, we have a whole new interface. And um, that was also a lot of time in there because especially if you have a lot of languages, it takes really long to translate your site. Before, like you went to the user interface and you had to click to edit for each single string. You save it, 
then you go back, and then if you paged, you had to click back on the pager, and uh, it just was really hard. So we said, okay, we remove all the clicking, and we just do the writing. So now it's like that, so whenever you search for a string, it shows you directly on the right side. It shows you the translation. You can enter it immediately. It also has um, plural support, whatever crazy plural system that some languages have, because not, it's not all, all this English where we only have two. The craziest one has five different plural versions. So that's all supported by Drupal out of core. Um, you just change it. You go through. You edit it, edit it, edit it. You save it, and you're done. Of course, you also have the filters on top that you can only check for the uh, strings that are not translated. So all that is aimed that we used to know. Next we can translate to English. So we not only have the issue that we want to remove English sometimes, we actually want to change it. Because maybe the shipped English translation um, comes with, a tr with, a, with some translation that you don't like or with some English that you don't like. You would like to change. Your customer uses a different type of English to talk to their users. So how you do that? In Drupal 7, you created another English to actually do that, but then you had the problem with the language assignment of the browsers and all these things. So we said, okay, let's just do it. We can translate to English. Um, important, it's not activated by default. So because of performance reasons, uh, per default that's not enabled, but you can go in and you can just enable translation to English, and then you basically just translate directly to English. So you can change whatever is there in Drupal without needing having a second language that confuses editors and users and all things. So that's really cool, especially if you need to change that a lot. It works exactly the same, so you just change your language um, to be translatable, and then you go into the interface, and it all works as it is a normal language. <laughs> so that's all of, um, of that pillar. So we can translate to English. We have a whole new interface which is more usable and more accessible. We have custom translations that not, not of, nothing of your stuff is overwritten. We have a centralized file deer. So whenever you do customs, it's all in one um, place. We have auto downloading and it's all in a separate module. So if you don't need it, you just disable it. It's not automatically in there as it used to be um, in Drupal 7. Next pillar, content translation. So first, all content entities are supported. And with Drupal 8, we even have more content entities. So we not only have nodes, we have terms, we have users, we maybe even have menu links, we'll see. And so all of, that, <laughs> all of that is supported out of the box. And whenever you have a content entity, or if you build your own content entity as a developer, it's fully supported, it's there, the API is there, it's all done automatically. Maybe you wonder, wait, content entities? Doesn't it, didn't it used to be entities? Yes. So in Drupal 8 now, we have the entity system, and in there we have two different type of entities. The first ones that we talk about now are the content entities. So that's notes, user comments, terms, contact messages, menu items. Um, so all the things that actually the editor goes in and changes. So he creates notes, user generate comments, etc. So it's all um, integrated in there. So whenever you um, create one, you can directly um, set in the unified system. You can just enable it, and you click all the fields you would like to translate. It shows you all of them. Um, you go through. You decide which one do I really want to translate. Um, and at the end, you press Save, and it's all done. Again, no need to click around, find things, how do I actually set stuff up to be translatable. And one thing I really like is the file. So you, can, you cannot translate the image, but you can translate the alt text and the title. So um, that's like a thing that happened a lot in Drupal 7, that like everything was translated, and then you hovered over an image, and then the alt title was not translated. So there's a module for that, but now it's all there. It's all in core. The translation interface has um, adapted a bit. We try to keep it as much as simple as people you know it from Drupal 7. So whenever you have a content entity, you have a translation, a translations tab, 
you just do, um, you click on it and um, you can add translations for each language. One really cool feature, you can actually change the source language, a common problem that we have. So we have like three different languages. It's first created in German, then it's translated to English, but then the French translation has to happen from the English translation, not from the German one, because it's cheaper. So you need different source translations, and that's now set. Well, so whenever you go in, you can say, defaultly, you will go to your default language, but you can say, no, I want to have a source language, I want to have something else. That's really cool. And um, then also, we have all languages, so some fields you can set to be translatable, but you can still change them in the translation itself, and the permission system handles that really neatly and all uh, these things. So we want to look at that. Um, you see um, that whenever on the on the right side, it's a new UI of Drupal 8, uh, of the edit screen. So you see on the right side, you see all these all languages that tells the editor that uh, these parts will be also changed in the source translation. Um, and um, yeah, it's much easier. And you see the title and the text and the body don't have that. So that's actually translatable. So it shows you, it shows the editor that changes the translation immediately what his um, changes will do. Property translation is in the works. So um, we still have the issue that the title is not fully supported. There's a lot of stuff happening there. We will support that, and it will be in. There's still some small issues, so if you want to help on that, come on Friday to the sprints. Um, there's some stuff to do there. There's also a lot of stuff to just test. So even if you're not a developer, come and join us. We have stuff for you um, to help us there. Upgrading. It used to be upgrade, now it's migration. So migrate will be in core, um, and we will also handle that. So people are currently setting up crazy Drupal 6 sites to, tr to support translations, and they have a lot of notes and translate and do every possible setting to handle migration with Drupal 8. So we won't upgrade anymore. You will install your whole D8 site completely new. You will point the migrate system to the old site. It will figure out what type of content types you have, how the translation used to work, and migrate all that stuff over, which is much more um, solid and secure than anything else than like just running an update PHP and hope that everything works, because it definitely won't. Core, search and API. So we done all the search stuff. So the search out of core has language support. That's really cool. We've done node access support. So if you need it, you can have different access per language, like that, some, that you say you have the English published and now you create a, a German, but only some roles are allowed to see the German version, even if it's the same node. Um, the node access API can handle that, so country modules can hook into that. That's really cool. So that's all about content translation. Um, we have node access API, we have search, we have the updated search APIs, we have every content entity covered. We have, even, we have bundle fields, we have subfields with the files we saw before. Properties are still in the work and we have a migration path. So even inside of content translation, everything works really well. The last thing, config translation. So as when I'm coming back to the slide before, we said there are entities and there are content entities. And then we have configuration entities. So inside of the entity system, you have content and configuration entities. Configuration entities are things like views, vocabularies, content categories, fields. And they are also translatable and they're handled by the um, config translation module. Unfortunately, there are some small things out there. Um, so path aliases are no um, entities at all. They are translatable and they are handled by itself. So they have the small um, integration into the translation system. And one really big thing currently are menu items. So there is a really big idea to change menus and menu items into content and configuration entities. The problem is a bit performance. So there's a lot of issues in there to make, still, to make your site really fast. But people are actively working on that, that we can also translate menu items. So it's out there in the others, but we hope that soon it will be back in and we have a fully translatable system. 
We're close to beta, so things happen that are a bit scary sometimes, but no worries, we will handle that. Um, language is tracked in each config file. So if you never worked with configuration management before, um, each configuration has its own file, and it's tracked in there. And you can actually override that. So the shipped configuration, which is the default configuration, is added to your core, to Drupal core. And then you can override with another file. So when the config is loaded, it checks if there is an, over, an override file by language and applies that. And that's actually how the whole translation works. So a really interesting thing is that we can not only support actually translation, we can handle multilingual sites. Because multilingual doesn't mean that sometimes you have a translation. An example, the front page. Let's say you want to have different front pages. You don't actually translate the path for the front page. You just change it because you would like to have a different front page in German and in English. That's not translation, that's multilingual. And that's handled by um, overriding the configuration storage. So whenever the config file is loaded, which contains the path to the home page, you can have a separate, a second file that is loaded and then changes that to whatever you would like to have it. So we have a short video how that works. Um, so for a shipped configuration, we would like to change the website feedback in there. So we just go where um, in the translation system and we search for that string, the website feedback. So it's also integrated, even config and config translation is its own thing. It's integrated into the, into the UI. You change it to whatever you would like. And then you change the language, and it's there. So some people won't even realize what is the difference between config translation and string trans or interface translation. Um, so it makes it easy for your editors because you just tell them if you need to translate something, search for it, change it, save it, go back. It most probably will be there. One thing that is unfortunately still um, missing, but I think that's a good thing because we don't know yet how we will really do it, um, is the integration into localized uh, Drupal.org. So localized Drupal.org is, as mentioned, is the site where people help translate um, contrib modules and core. So the integration is still missing there, but we will work on that whenever um, we fixed all the beta stuff. Um, and also, the whole thing works for any configuration. So whatever you imagine, not only the title there, if you want to change something else, you can do that um, via the system. So you can, for example, translate the, the block title of the language switcher, which is, a, um, which, is, which is a block, and we can change that as well. You just search for it, and you change it, and it's done. So here we see that we can also go directly inside of the config where you or the config entity where you change it. You can also have there, you have a translation tab. You can change it and save it and done. So config translation is its own module that handles all of configuration. Um, it adds translation tabs as the content translation. So it's again there unified in the UI. You have the possibility to override existing configuration. It works for any configuration. And also the shipped um, translation, the shipped strings you can translate in there. So important, if you build your own modules or if you build your own entities, please, 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 please use content translation or use config, uh, con content entities or use config entities. If you use something else, you won't be covered. If you use it, you're covered. So you basically just define your config entities and they are automatic translatable. If they have a UI, they automatically have a translation tab. So you don't even have to worry about, as a developer, what you really need to do in there. So coming back, we have language module, which provides us the base for any every language. We have interface translation module, which does everything in the interface. We have a content translation module for all the content, and we have a config for all the config. So I guess if we look back, actually, to Tobias, what he said, he's pretty right. So coming back from 27 modules in Drupal 7, we're back to four 
in Drupal 8, and it can actually do more. It works better, it's more usable, it's more accessible, it's nicer, it's faster. So whenever you do a Drupal 8 multilingual site, and I've done one, it's so much easier, it's so much better, um, so it's really cool. But we're not done yet. There are still things to do. So if you sit in here and think like, okay, that's really cool. I want to help, I want to try out, I want to test, and that's something that we really need right now. We need people that just set up a site, go through it, and test it, or try to build your site, and whatever happens, write an issue, and Kathy will look at it and figure out, <laughs> and figure out if it's a bug or not. <laughs> so if you're up for helping, come this Friday, there are the sprints happening in the convention center as well. If you never ha um, helped before, no worries. There will be mentors that help you setting up your site, um, help you how the issue queue works. It's really well organized. So if you have time, if you plan to go to Austin, come to our sprints. It's much more nice here, and you can look at pictures of all the other people that took pictures in Austin. Or next time, for the next con, organize your, your trip actually till Tuesday, because the sprints are not only on Friday, they're also happening on Saturday and Sunday. So you can come and help us there. Um, if you can't, there is a website, drupal8multilingual.org, where you find all the information, current issues we're all working on, and there's also localized drupal.org, because we need to translate, or we start translating Drupal 8 into other languages. We have new strings, we have new features, they need translation, so if you um, speak a, um, a language, even better a super fancy language that nobody else speaks, go and help us there, we really need your help. Um, also, there's a Twitter account, D8MI, where we um, update what's, what's currently happening, if we need help, what, what's all in there. And actually, a really cool thing is you can try it out right now. So if you go to drupal.org slash 8, you land on a site that um, is the Drupal 8 site on drupal.org, and there is a button that is called Test Drupal 8 Dev. And it's a really cool system of some of the core um, contributors that um, allows you to set up a site in your browser. You don't need any development system on your local. It's all happening on cloud servers. So you can set it up. You get 30 minutes to try out. So if you want to try something, and especially during the sprints, that will probably happen a lot, go there, try it out, play around, and break things. It won't break anything else than your own site, so no worries there. So that's it. First, really, really, really thanks to all the people that helped here. Um, so that are on that slide. There are also people that maybe are not on that slide and talk to Gabor. Um, but um, there should be all the people that ever worked with Drupal 8 Multilingual should be on there. It's really great that they spent their time to help us to make Drupal 8 a better multilingual experience than it ever was. And um, yeah, that's it. I thank you. So I rushed a bit through that we can get the time delay to not like delay other um, sessions. But if you have questions, we have 13 minutes for questions. Yes, and we need the microphone. Wherever it is. Yeah. Well, uh, stand up, walk to the microphone, we can answer the questions. Yes. So when you're with content, specifically in Drupal 8, what's the best process for updating translations? Like doing it right on the live site with Workbench or migrating it from stage to production? With Drupal 8 now? Yeah, with Drupal 8. There is no content staging yet. There are some, tr there are some um, talks actually here about content staging in Drupal 8. So that means like you first create your translation on another site and then you ma migrate it over. <clears throat> so migrate module itself will definitely help us there. But I can't tell you exactly how their plan is for content staging in Drupal 8. Um, so currently um, what we did on our side is that yeah, we just, so each translation has its own published state. So um, you basically start to create it and you don't publish it yet and people look at it and then you publish it. The problem is that sometimes views and stuff ba is based on publishing status, which is probably the case why you want to have it somewhere else to really look at it. So that's not supported out of core, but there will definitely be country modules that support that and they will be also multilingual aware 
because if they use the whole content entity and the config entity, it's all one thing and it will be supported. Thank you. Hi, just a quick question. I wish I could deploy my product on D8. Of course, it's not quite ready yet for that. Um, is there a place where all 27 of the modules in D7 is documented where I can figure all that out quickly? There's a book. There's a book. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yes. Talk, talk to her. She will tell you how it works. Yes. Hi. Hello. Um, Project-wise for Drupal 8, I'm just wondering if this is anywhere on the radar. Um, I, I run a site that's on all over the world, uh, Latin America, Saudi Arabia, China, um, Indonesia. Um, is one of the problems that we're running into is the, the subject of gender. Um, uh -huh. In Russia, sometimes in a sentence will change completely to, uh, well, not, uh, some, verbs will be conjugated differently depending on the subject. Um, in Spanish and French, there's object gender. In Saudi Arabia, there's some verbs that can't even be used by females. Yes. So, um, is that anywhere like on the roadmap? It's not handled specifically by core that you have like gender specific strings or so. Um, so it's just at the end you translate one string into another. So the translator that does that probably needs some context information about that. Right. I mean, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> sometimes you want to match like a sentence to uh, an object, right? Yes. So I mean, some way to store that object's gender, things like that. So. Ah. Okay. Hmm. Or a user's gender. Or, or what you could do, because everything is an entity now, you can add fields. You can add fields to end to files. You can add fields to, to users. So if you need additional metadata information about objects, if there are entities in Drupal, add them fields. So you could say, like, um, that car is female or male right. with just adding a field to the image of the car of the, of the entity and then basically use that for the test. If that would help. Yeah. But, uh, right. so I just wanted... but there is no gender assignment um, like there is language assignment. But if it's a really big case, I mean, um, so first, it's definitely way easier to change that stuff in Drupal 8 with like overwriting existing systems than it used to be in 7. So if you really need that, um, yeah, maybe, maybe look at the APIs in 8, so that will be definitely easier. Hey there, I'm Kevin Hi. with Kiva, and uh, we use Drupal to translate about 10,000 plus loans uh, every month. Yeah. And it's been really awesome seeing all these improvements. I'm really excited for these. Um, but what I am curious about, we're kind of at a decision point over actual translation tools for the translators themselves to um, improve their translations. And this is something that I think Drupal hasn't quite picked up on yet. And oftentimes, our translators are jumping out of Drupal, pasting their text into the big external translation products, doing their work there, and then bringing it back. So do you guys think that? Um, it's the right decision to put effort into building translation memories and search uh, translation suggestions into Drupal? Or do you think that uh, this is something that we should allow the, the third parties to continue to do that, what they do best? Yeah, you need to, um, And so you can come to my talk at 1 if you're interested in how we're doing that as well. Cool. So one thing, one thing that definitely addresses um, your issue is that so um, translation management tool is a system, it's actually a whole system with multiple modules that allows you, or that connects when like Drupal actually stops. So a lot of issues like, okay, you can translate your site, but you maybe have external translators, or you have like workflows to review translations and stuff. So translation management tool is built for seven and eight and, and supports specifically that. So you create a job out of, so, you have different translations like menu items, terms. You can put all them in a job and send them somewhere else. And somewhere else is either a translator that is on your local site, a local Drupal site, or a service provider via an API. So that's, um, that's definitely one of the things that, 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 that I will check out. Also, there are people sitting here from um, translation providers like Lingotech right there. So talk to them because they do really cool stuff about um, translation memory. And I know they have a Drupal 7 site, I don't know, a Drupal 7 module, I don't know about the 8 module. 
Yeah, he's nodding. Okay, so there will be also a Drupal 8 module to handle that. So there, you're covered, but not by core itself. Thank you. Yeah. Keep that page up. Um, can you talk a little bit about the work that's on D8 for the, this module? And like, are, who's working on it in here? Is anybody working on it in here? I'm working you on are, it, well, yeah. <laughs> so um, the process is that, that um, the core is, uh, Let's say that the core is all migrated. So Drupal 8 translation management tools works. Um, it actually works better because of the whole entity system. It's much easier. Um, the source and the, especially the, the, the translator plugins are not all yet done. But the Microsoft Bing translator and I guess the Google tra automated translator, they are there. So most of the stuff actually works. So if you're interested in that, download it, try it out. Um, yeah, I don't know about the Lingotech. How is your Drupal 8 module going? Oh, Mark, you have, uh, ten, lines of code? 10 lines of code. Good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. So, work in progress, but we'll be there. Perfect. Cool. Hey, Michael. Good. Hey. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you have any fun when you work on uh, contributing to multilingual? If I have any fun on it? Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Why you ask? Uh, because uh, I want you all to know that it's not stressful at all. And we do have a lot of fun, and we're really supportive, um, and we will help you wherever you are and make you feel really productive and be really productive. And if for some reason your travel situation means that you can't come on Friday, um, the whole entire community is got a completely different mindset now than they did several years ago. And you can go to the 24-hour coder lounge, sit down next to somebody you don't even know, tell them you're new, what you're interested in, and they may not be able to help you, but they will spot somebody else in the room and be like, oh, you should go talk to so-and-so. I think they can help you. So, you know, Friday is the place to be, uh, but don't let that hold you back. If you got to go home, you got to go home. Uh, we still have some other, like, more relaxed uh, <laughs> opportunities in the 24-hour coder lounge. Yes. So, yeah, come on Friday, definitely. Walk in and tell them you want to go to the best um, initiative. And, <laughs> and there will be somewhere a sign that calls the 8 mi or Multilingual, and we will all sitting there and working with you, and we'll make Drupal 8 awesome. Yes. Thank you, Kathy. So, uh, I'm sorry if I missed this point earlier, but um, I'm still a little unclear about the integration between the interface translation and the content translation. Yes. And um, with Drupal 7 now, it's uh, it's a little bit of a pain, you know, to have to export all the translatable strings out with, with uh, the POTX module. Yes. And then to have people translate the content. Can you speak a little bit more about how Drupal 8 will address this? To be honest, it's unfortunately still, so as we saw, there are three different modules there's still three different systems, some kind. So the content translation is completely separated from a UA point and also from exporting and importing than the others. So the interface translation has the, has the new, in, uh, new UI where you can directly translate and config translation, as it used to be with IATN in Drupal 7, directly shows you stuff in there. So it's like it's a bit combined with interface and config translation, where config translation it's it's a, it's its own thing. But if you import and export, you still have the PO files. So that's not something that we really addressed. That's something that I want to fix for 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, maybe 9, whatever, to like make the UI unified. Because when we look at other CMSs, what I saw there, like in Typo 3, you go there and say, like, create me a translation file. And it outputs you an XML file, which contains everything in there. So you have your content and your config and your strings all in once. And you translate that and you throw it back and it's all there. So TMGMT, or Translation Management Tool, handles you part of that. But it's still a lot of different pieces. So the, the, the process that we actually do is we first unify all these things. That happened with Drupal 8. And now we have a base that we can really work on to make the UI and like the whole process really, really, really great around that. But we first needed to fix the base. So if you're interested and if you have ideas 
write them down, come to us, tell, talk to us, because I guess we are interested in like knowing how we should continue in there as well. Um, but currently, there's nothing really that fixes that, so it's still like hard to find strings and so. Hi. Hi. I think you touched on this perhaps when you talked about path auto under the other category. Yes. Um, we currently use path translation on our site for, so for example, like a login URL, we have login and then we have the other language. And it mm -hmm. would be, we are not using more than one language on our sites right now, but obviously we're going to have to move into that because we're international. And I was wondering what kind of work you guys are doing right now in regards to paths uh, because that's very, that's of interest to us, and we've had some issues where we've targeted a path, and right now it's English-based, and I was very intrigued by you talking about English no longer being a base, so. Yes, so inside, of course, it's now, the base is not English anymore, it's just language, and you can translate that to English. Um, so if I understand your question correct, so you have, you have like different, um, like paths for like slash user slash login in different languages. And in, in eight, you can assign them languages. So would that already fix your issue? Or what did you think so that when like, the English is the base? Um, if English is no longer the base, I think it would fix it. I mean, one of the things we've done is we've targeted certain paths for SSL and things like that. So um, you know, obviously, that's, that's in the Apache configuration. But I don't know if you guys. Yeah, I guess with like actually assigning languages to paths uh, or path aliases, mm -hmm. fix will fix a lot of issues to like have different ones. Um, the question is if there is a module that actually redirects you to the right ones, because sometimes you go with the not a path prefix, then the path is itself. Yeah. But I guess that's definitely fixable as well. So I hope you're fixed, but you would definitely need to try it out more. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I might try and show up on Friday and test. Good. It. Awesome. Yes. Hello. Hi. Uh, for those of you who, who uh, haven't seen it yet, there's also a, a Drupal 8 multilingual boff. Uh, Gabor uh, has said that he's going to try and, and uh, um, there. come uh, remotely, uh, at least. Uh, it, it's going to be kind of late his time, but, but uh, just like uh, Schnitzel said, he wasn't able to make it. But, but uh, So uh, tomorrow at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, if you're interested, have questions, or, or, or just want to hang out and, and talk about uh, Drupal 8 uh, multilingual issues, uh, that, that's also a, a great chance, especially if you're not able to come on, on Friday or, or over the weekend. So Cool. Thank you. That's awesome. OK. Yep. It's, uh, it, it, 10, 10 B or 10 C, yeah, third floor. Uh, it, it's on the schedule. Uh, but uh, check it out and okay. love to see everyone. Good. Hi. Hi. Uh, we use multilingual pretty heavily, but I'll preface this by saying that we're on a really customized D6 version, and we're going to be skipping to 8. Yes. So if some of these questions are already solved in 7, I apologize. Uh, first of all, do you know, is there any initiative to have regular expressions searching in the, the interface strings? Because that's um, an issue that we have right now. No, but you should be able to really easy add that. Okay. Um, you mentioned that in the content translation, there was a way to turn off translation for certain fields. Like, for example, if I didn't want to translate one particular field, it would just not yes. be available for translation. Is that going to be available for the uh, interface and, and config strings as well, where you can turn off individual fields as being translatable? So you Or strings. So you mean that? I'm sorry. So on the right side, you see all languages and... Um, I, I think the slide that I was remembering was one where it had a bunch of checkboxes for each field oh, on a content yes, type. Yes, yes. Yeah, where you can turn, you can disable... Yes. Like, yeah, I don't yeah. know why you want to True. do this. True, yeah, that's how it ends up then, sense. being shown, yes. Okay, okay yeah, and so you would like to have that for? Uh, for interface strings. Oh. Or for, uh, or for config. I, I, for config. Um, I'm just wondering if that's possible. I can't think of a particular So it's more a permission question than you ask than, than actually a, a site building question. Because not really because we do all of our translation exported. So okay. if I could prevent export ah. by saying, for example, maybe this is a terrible example, but a views column header. Yes. If it was not exportable. 
Yes, that would be awesome. There is no such system in core, but as said, it's um, it's it's really easy now with seven uh, with eight to hook into that stuff and and basically change the the controller that that is responsible for exporting things. So you could easily. Um, do some kind of like that that the, that each config entity has a checkbox not translatable or prevent translation, and when you export that, look at that checkbox and do whatever you would like to do. So there's not no I no not of a module that can do that, but from lines of code, maybe it's a bit more than ten, but it shouldn't be a lot of code that to to write all that stuff. Okay, and then briefly, uh, real quick, you mentioned. Um that I'm very sad to hear that uh, the translation, uh, the interface and config and all that is still PO files. That's that's really sad. But uh. it's not with TMGMT. With translation okay. management tools, you can export as XLIF. You have um, services integrations into service providers. So that also fixes you that because yes, PO files I also hate. Okay, them. XLIF. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, I guess we have to last question or last saying, and then we have to wrap up. I just wanted to mention that the BOF, there's, there's also a multilingual BOF for Drupal 7 for Ooh. those of you who are stuck in the dark ages. Actually, a lot of sites are still <laughs> All of them. much better, right? But D7 is where a lot of sites happen to live. And so if you want to talk about how to get that multilingual, Thursday at 1, there's also a session. Okay, so Wednesday 1, 3D8 multilingual, 3D8, Thursday, Drupal yeah, 7 multilingual. 10 B and 10 C. Perfect. Yeah, one question? Sorry, one quick question. So uh, you mentioned about the migrate module being in the Drupal 8 core. Yes. So it will help with, I mean, we have our content in D6 right now. So it will help uh, migrate everything from node level to the P level translation? Yes, yes. It so the migrating time. core will not only have support for D7 to D8, it will have support from D6 to D8. Okay. So if you plan to upgrade your D site in the near future, you should maybe skip seven, wait probably a year or one and a half, yeah, and then building on eight. That's what we are planning to, yeah. Um, yeah. So it will be supported, yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, they're working on six first. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Enjoy the conference. <laughs>